Why did Jesus die on the cross? On April 12, 2004, after the release of Mel Gibson's widely acclaimed film The Passion of the Christ graphically depicting the cruel torture and crucifixion of Jesus, the cover of Time magazine asked, Why did Jesus have to die? Based on the Bible and the teachings of the fathers of the church, Bible scholars and theologians try to explain the reason for Jesus' death, proposing various theories. All these theories are based on the central fact that man cannot atone for his sin against the infinite justice of God. But God is both just and loving. Therefore, God's love is willing to meet the demands of his justice. But only a God-man could do that, and Jesus the God-man made that atonement by his suffering and death. Out of perfect love for us, Jesus took upon himself the punishment we deserved. Thus his willingness to suffer in our place balanced the divine scales of justice. The debt was now paid. His love paid the price. His passion and death atoned for our sins and redeemed us. Christ's making satisfaction for the penalty of our sins through suffering was, in fact, the way God chose to make possible our salvation. 1. The first group of theologians explains Christ's death by the theory of substitutionary atonement. Around AD 57, the Apostle Paul explained that Jesus' death was a redemptive and atoning act because, Jesus died for us on account of our sins, Rom 4.25. In other words, Christ died for man, in man's place, taking man's sins and bearing them for him. The Nicene Creed, proclaims this idea thus, for us men and our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. The Catholic Church adopted substitution as a legitimate doctrine at the Council of Trent. That is why the Catechism of the Catholic Church states, Justification has been merited for us by the Passion of Christ who offered himself on the cross as a living victim, holy and pleasing to God, and whose blood has become the instrument of atonement for the sins of all men. A second group of theologians and Bible scholars views Jesus' atonement by his death as ransom paid, the ransom payment theory. Mark in his Gospel uses this Roman legal terminology for the freeing of slaves when he quotes Jesus. The Son of Man came to give his life as a ransom for many. MK 1045. A debt to divine justice has been incurred, and that debt must be paid. But man could not make this satisfaction for himself because the debt was something far greater than he could pay. Only a God man could pay it by his suffering and death. The third group of theologians considers Jesus' suffering and death as a unique and definitive sacrifice for the atonement of human sins. That is why John the Baptist calls Jesus the Lamb, who takes away the sin of the world, JN 129. The Apostle John calls Jesus, the atoning sacrifice for our sins, one. The Council of Trent called Christ's sacrifice as the source of eternal salvation. 4. A fourth group of theologians proposes their exemplary atonement theory to explain Christ's sacrificial death as demonstration of God's love for us. By giving up his own son for our sins, God manifests that his plan for us is one of benevolent love, prior to any merit on our part. Jesus' death was designed to impress mankind greatly with a sense of God's love, resulting in softening their hearts and leading them to repentance. 5. Yet another explanation of the reason for Christ's suffering and death is the theory of solidarity with suffering humanity. The Church teaches us that Jesus saved and reconciled humanity to God in and through his death and resurrection. It is that which enables us to find meaning for our sufferings in the sufferings of Christ. A suffering God is a source of inspiration for suffering humanity. Life Messages 1. Let us welcome our crosses as Jesus did for the atonement of our sins and those of others. We may have been crucified several times and betrayed by our dear ones. We may have been misunderstood in the most calculated and deliberate of ways by those whom we trusted and loved. 
We may have been forced to take up the cross for others several times. We may have felt forsaken and abandoned on several occasions. The question we should ask ourselves on Good Friday is whether we have accepted these painful experiences gracefully from a loving God and offered all these painful occasions as atonement for our sins. And for the sins of our dear ones. By dying on the cross Jesus embraced human suffering. So, when we are troubled and in distress, we can turn to him in confidence that he will be with us. Jesus unites his cross with our own and calls upon us to share in the sufferings of others. This means we are to bear one another's burdens, just as Christ has carried our burdens. That's one way we can show that we have accepted Christ's precious gift. 2. Let us experience and share Christ's love. Since on Good Friday we gratefully remember the depth of the sacrificial love shown by Jesus. We should see the reality we celebrate as an invitation to show our gratitude to our Savior by loving those who don't deserve our love and by showing compassion to those who suffer and those who may have no one to help them face the prospect of death.